What's up Street Talks, the Eric Kim from the Eric Kim Street Photography Blog. So just wanted to do a quick uh, video on some practical tips and tricks in terms of how to be invisible when shooting street photography. I often ask this to a lot of students at workshops is, if you had one superpower in street photography, what would it be? And it's almost unanimous that the tip is uh, everyone wants <laughs> invisibility. And it's, it's definitely um, something I could relate with because, you know, sometimes I see something uh, an interesting person or a scene and I want to make a photograph of that but I feel self-conscious and I'm thinking oh you know what if that person noticed me taking their photograph what if it's going to be weird what if it's going to be awkward what if they get pissed off yell at me threaten to punch me in the face actually punch me in the face etc well the first thing I want to mention is I think invisibility in street photography is a bit overrated first of all because there's a lot of situations in which because your subject notices you taking a photo of them they react to you in some sort of way, which makes the photograph more interesting, which could be eye contact, hand gestures, uh, body language, or even uh, being able to have the chance to talk to somebody. There's been a lot of cases where I've taken photos of people and then they look at me and I could kind of tell that they're not pissed off. Then I'll approach them, I'll start interacting with them, hearing their life story, end up uh, making a, a brand new connection. But of course, there's other situations where it's good to be a little more invisible when you're shooting street photography, for example, if you're shooting somewhere where you shouldn't be shooting and, you know, it's not allowed or whatever, then trying to be invisible is a good idea. Um, uh, certain times where, like, perhaps you want to respect the, the local customs. So let's say you're shooting in uh, the Middle East. Generally, you want to be a little more low-key when you're shooting in areas where uh, photography is highly frowned upon. Or other situations, let's say you're photographing the mall or... You just you just you just have one of those days where you don't want to talk to anybody, which is totally cool. So these are just some practical tips and tricks in terms of uh, how to stay invisible. So one of the practical tips I have is the click, pause, move on technique. The concept is when you're out shooting street photography, the giveaway that you've taken a photo of somebody is the motion that you bring up the camera, click, and you put down the camera. What you should try to do instead is after you've taken the photo, go click. You hold the camera up for about three seconds and pause, go one, two, three, and then move on. Because if, you've, if you take a photo and you hold your camera up and you pause, people assume that you're just photographing something behind them because most photographers, when they take a photo of somebody, they click and just immediately drop their cameras. So you could practice this in different ways. So for example, uh, this is a photograph I shot in Seoul and Korea about maybe in 2012 or something like that. See this guy with interesting uh, face mask, I like the hand gesture. I saw him, got really close, and I shot with a flash. Um, click, and after taking the photo, I just waited, and then moved on. And I think the guy just like kind of looked, looked back at me and wasn't quite sure what I was photographing and assumed I photographed something else. Uh, other ways you could do this is, let's say you see somebody drinking a coffee, you approach them, you crouch down, you take a photo, click, and you look through your viewfinder and see uh, their reaction. And if they're looking back at you and they're looking pretty pissed off or upset, then what you could do is still hold the camera up to your eye, hold the camera up, down, left, right, and then move on. So the, the biggest tip about this trick is by pausing and by adding a small delay after you've taken a photograph, it's a lot less obvious who you've taken a photograph of or if you've even taken a photograph. Um, technique number two, click, take a step forward, click, take a step forward, click, take a step forward, repeat. The concept between this project is, um, or this, this technique is often when it comes to street photography, we're not close enough to our subjects. And a lot of photographers, what they'll do is they'll take a photo of somebody really far away and they'll just crop in. And the problem with that is you don't get the same perspective as if you got really close to uh, somebody and shot them uh, at a closer distance. So why, what I uh, try to do when I'm shooting is, uh, I don't know, generally when I think I'm close enough, I'm actually not close enough. So I'll take a photograph from a distance, click, get a little bit closer, click, get a little bit closer, click. And I'm trying to get as close to my subject as much as possible. Of course, there is something as being too close but 99% of the time, we're just too far away. So if you actually take a look at my contact sheet, the behind the scenes of uh, how I made this image is, I was working on my suits project, the light was pretty good, I see a guy texting on his phone. So I take a photo from a distance, click. You can see in the first shot, there's a little bit too much white uh, wall on the right side of the frame, which is a bit distracting. So I take a step forward, click, 
a little bit less white raw on the right side. Take a step forward. And I see him doing an interesting hand gesture, brushing his hair, click. That's good. And then by shot number four, I take another step forward, click. And you can see how the edges of the frame are pretty clean. Another practical composition tip in street photography is when you're shooting, look at the edges of the frame because that's what we often over overlook. So just kind of toss your sub subject somewhere in the center of the frame. And as long as you focus on getting your edges clean, you tend to have better compositions. And by num shot number five, I was still taking photos and it held my camera up. And because I was within like a, an arm length distance away from the guy, he kind of looked up to just wonder what I was doing. And I clicked again. And after that, I took another step forward, click, and I was pretending like I was photographing the Starbucks behind him. And so what I like about this technique is that I was still able to be invisible in the case that, you know, he just assumed that I was photographing something behind him. But in reality, this technique helped me get closer to him and closer to him and closer to him. And also by having the eye contact, I think it gives the photograph much more energy, um, a much more sense of anxiety, just looking at the look on his face, him grabbing his tie. And this is kind of a very intense look. And it's probably a photograph I wouldn't have been able to make if I just made one or two quick photos and just ran away. All right, tip number three, uh, don't make eye contact. So have you ever been in a situation where you're sitting in a bus or a train or somewhere else and you kind of feel like someone is staring at you and suddenly your, your shoulders tense up and you feel kind of awkward, look around the room and there from the corner of your eye, there's the one creepy guy looking at you. And the second you guys make eye contact, you both immediately look away. Oftentimes, um, if people stare at you, and this is hardwired into our DNA, we see eye contact as a form of aggression, and uh, we feel like intimidated that by somebody staring at us, it's a sign of uh, them trying to fight us or something like that. So generally, we tend to not make eye contact with other strangers, and you you guys could tell this, you know, when you're uh, in the in the elevator with a bunch of strangers, everyone just pretend to look at their phone or looking at their feet, whatever. People don't like to make eye contact, and if you make eye contact with somebody, they'll probably sense that you could, or you're making eye contact with them because they'll be able to see from their periphery. However, if you just completely avoid eye contact, people will never really uh, notice you. So for example, in this photograph, I'm shooting this kind of towards night with a flash, and I was in London, and I see this interesting billboard. This lady just kind of like pounding against the window, and I see a lady just kind of texting on her phone or something. And so I just get really close, take one photograph, and she and then I, she noticed the flash looked up again. I took another photo with a flash and I just didn't make eye contact. Uh, and then I just walked away. And generally, if you avoid making eye contact, people won't really suspect much. And this is also a good strategy because uh, if you shoot it with a wider and uh, wider angle lens, let's say a 35 millimeter lens or a 28 millimeter lens, you don't actually have to point the camera directly at somebody to have them to be in the frame. And therefore, this will allow you to not make eye contact and be a little bit more stealth when you're shooting on the streets. Tip number four, and a lot of these kind of go together as well. Pretend like you're shooting something behind your subject. So for example, um, kind of these two photos were shot essentially the same way is that there's an interesting back bar, uh, billboard and there's a person in the foreground. And what I'll do is I'll shoot with a flash. And after I've taken the photo, I don't make eye contact with my subject. I actually make eye contact with the billboard in the background. So 99% of people will turn around and just assume that I'm just a tourist who just photographed the background behind them. And so one th another way you could do this is let's say you see somebody and see a billboard or there's a crowded street behind them. Get close, take one photograph, and then drop your camera and just keep your eyes fixated at the thing you're photographing behind them. And then bring up your camera again and pretend to keep taking photos of whatever is behind them. And then don't make eye contact with their subject and just walk away. And uh, the last quick tip in terms of being invisible when it comes to shooting street photography is pretend like you're recording a video. Uh, something I also like to call the video camera technique. The concept behind the technique is, um, have you ever been in a crowded area when you're traveling? You see a bunch of tourists with video cameras and they're doing essentially a 360 panoramic of the entire area. If you've ever been in the line of fire of a tourist with a video camera, does that upset you? Probably not because you assume that they're photographing something else or they're videoing something else and that they're just, they're not particularly video, um, videoing you, but they're just videoing the scene, which most people don't really mind. And so the tip I have is next time you're out shooting somewhere in a public area or you want to be more stealthy, 
hold your camera up to your eye, to your viewfinder, or if your camera has an LCD, stick it out and walk the streets and pretend like you're just recording a video. And the tip is once again, don't drop your camera down from your eye. And you could do this in several different ways. So first of all, start the assignment by not taking any photographs at all. So just walking down the street pretty slowly, camera up to your eye, pretend like you're taking videos and look through the viewfinder and just kind of judge people's reactions. And technically nobody could get angry at you because you're not taking a photo of anybody. And once you feel more comfortable doing this, then actually start clicking and taking photos. And this is kind of probably the best way to look invisible when you're out shooting street photography. Uh, because it's generally what subjects notice us taking photos of is the jerking motion of us bringing our camera up to our eye and dropping our camera. But they don't really notice it when we're pretty static and holding our camera up to our faces. Other practical tips is uh, the way you dress is pretty important. So let's say you're shooting somewhere. It's probably not the best idea to wear a bright green shirt when you're shooting because the colors attract our eyes. So when I'm out shooting street photography, I prefer to wear darker clothing, let's say a black shirt. And especially if you have a black camera, a black camera against a black shirt is a little bit more hard to, to see. Um, other ways you could quote quote blend in is let's say you're shooting somewhere that's touristy. Maybe by dressing up as a tourist, people give you less crap because they just assume you're a tourist. So I even have some friends who are from Paris and they'll walk around with the I love Paris shirt or photographers who are from New York City will wear a I love NY shirt and wear like uh, a floppy touristy hat or something like that. But uh, yeah, so just consider that the way you dress is also quite important to be more low key and invisible. To wrap up, just know that at the end of the day, you know, there are certain situations where you want to be invisible and certain situations that actually being noticed and interacting with subjects can make a much more interesting photograph. So just kind of play off the two. For me personally, I probably do about, let's say 70 photos, 70% uh, of my street photography with permission where I'm interacting with my subject, maybe 30% when I'm being more invisible and trying to be candid and low key. And it just kind of depends on your mood. There are certain days just more extroverted, you want to chat to people. There are certain days where I'm a little more introverted. I just want to kind of stay to myself. And depending on whether you're invisible or you're obvious that you're shooting photographs, you're going to make different photographs. There's no one right or wrong, uh, wrong way to do it. Ultimately, just kind of figure out what works best for you. And hopefully you could try these tips uh, when you're out shooting the streets. So until next time, guys, um, be merry, drink lots of coffee. Cindy made me a lovely cold brew with uh, coconut milk because I'm lactose intolerant, which is keeping me wired. Uh, shoot. Also, another tip, uh, shoot with a friend. Helps you build your confidence. It makes you look more touristy, which is always good. And that's it. All right. Peace out, guys.